What has music taught you so far? Um, it's taught me to be patient for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like for a while, a lot of stuff like wasn't really happening for me as an artist, and you know you get frustrated, you get discouraged, but you know you just keep pushing, and it it taught me a lot of stuff. Lot it taught me how to be you know just consistent and you know determined about what you really want and patience. Mm. You know. What's one thing you love most about being an artist? Uh, that you can create, because you can't really create, like, doing anything else. Like, you can't really, really like, be, like, like, have an impact being yourself, like, right. on a lot of different uh, levels of anything, really. Like, even if you, you're a doctor, you know what I'm saying, you have to follow certain criteria. But as an artist, like, you can just do anything, you know, like, you can make this sound this way, or you can say this, and people will like it just because you said it. So. Right, and you know, myself working in a job, like, I work here, per se, but, you know, I, of course, I have to pay bills. Sure. And where I work, work, you can't really create with that because you have to kind of stick within a certain box of what we got to do. You got to do A, B, C, and D, E, F, G. So it's not a creative job. Exactly. So You got to do, do your job that, you, that they told you to do. Exactly, and that sucks. <laughs> it sucks. It do, but, I mean, it, it's a check. <laughs> it's it, so. it, 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 in a roundabout way, it is a set because you got to do what you got to do. But at the mm -hmm. same time, you know, I think the hardest part is breaking that nine to five cycle. That right there is like one of the hardest things. When did you break that cycle? If you ever in that cycle? Um, I'm still in that cycle, bro. I still got a job, bro. Like music is it's an income. You feel me? But like, it's it's waves of the income. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't have. I'm not signed to a label. You feel me? Like I'm. I have a distribution deal, but that's when I distribute music. Mm -hmm. If I'm not making music, or if I'm not putting out music at that time, I'm not getting paid. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm not like doing shows or anything like that, like you're not making no money. Like it's not like, um, you know, Drake or somebody. That's just like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you can just sit down and just chill and just watch the watch the M's come in. Like it's, right. it's a grind out here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you ever feel like your grind will stop? To a certain point? Uh, nah. I was just low key thinking about that on the way over here. Like, like nah. I'm gonna probably be that fifty year old, like, <laughs> still like rapping and like messing young young dudes up. Like, yeah. With with the bars, with the music that I make and distribute, like, yeah. I'm I'm gonna always like have like the talent to rap and create music, bro. That's just like a god gift. Mm -hmm. So. Well, you never too. It's not like rap is like a sport, you know. Like when you get to a certain age, you play professional sport. You literally cannot go on anymore because your body just cannot take it. Exactly. That's exactly how I look at it. Mm -hmm. Whereas you know, you like for example, a good example is Hove and four four four. I don't That's know trash, what. what? Okay. You thought you thought four 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 was trash. I'm not a big JV fan. What? Yeah. I've never been a big JV fan. That's crazy. Never. You thought it was hot garbage. You didn't like the track on it. I'm not gonna say like I didn't like the track on it, but like. I don't really like Jay Z like that, so it's like I'm not. I'm like it's, it dropped. Everybody else is like, oh my god, Jay Z just dropped. And I'm like, All yeah, right, that's cool. Can I? How come you don't like him? It's not that I don't like him. It's more so of I'm not motivated to listen to him because I know, like, I'm not get. To me, honestly, I, I feel like he's really basic. He's like what you when like your prototypical rapper would be Jay Z. Wow, you feel me, like. He's he's like great. He's amazing. You feel me? But he's Tim Duncan. Tim like, Duncan is amazing. He's great. amazing. But he's like number 10, 11 on the all time list, right? Yeah. 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 What I mean, sir. I feel like that's Jay Z. Wow. Me. Like he's good at everything, but he's not like great at something. I feel like that's Jay Z. Wow. I think Ho is a. Amazing. He's fire. <laughs> I mean, he's fire. I'm not gonna sit up here and say I don't like Jay Z music or I don't uh -huh. like his songs. Like some of the songs he put out, I vibe to him. But do you? If we talking about like all the rappers like ever, bro, he's not in my top ten. I'm sorry. You think he's overrated? Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. very interesting. That's interesting, man. I can't. I can't say I agree with you. You don't uh, have to. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Understandably, it's just like. You know, me being so much younger, you know, you're around my age, so we're younger versus when Hope was in his prime, you know. I, but the thing is, bro, that's that's why we got, like, streaming services, and that's why we got YouTube. We can go back and we can see what's popping. But the thing is, we can't, like, live in that moment of when he was popping. You know what I mean? Like, we can't live in that moment of his rookie season when he came out with The Reasonable Doubt and the albums after that. You know, we can't.
can't live in that moment. We can go back and listen to it, but we don't really know the impact he had when that dropped. You feel me? Right. So, so who to you is not a prototypical rapper? Oh, that's a lot, bro. I like uh, my favorite rapper of all time is Wayne. Okay. I feel like Wayne's like he just took rap to a whole new level, and he just influenced the sound. Not only a sound, but an appearance. Like every rapper looks like Wayne right now. Every like that's rapper true. looks like Wayne. That's facts. You know? Yeah, everyone's they, copying. The they journey. they might not dress like Wayne, but every rapper looks like Wayne. The hair, like from the yeah. face tats, the hair, the swag, like everything. He influenced like everything for this generation. And he's just like the go-to me, bro. That's wild. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I you know honestly. I like Lil Wayne. My favorite Lil Wayne project. I was not a fan of Carter Five at all. My favorite Wayne project. Wait, wait, wait. You don't like Carter Five? Uh, Carter Five had bangers on it, bro. I like the track. With, I like Mona Lisa. The Travis Scott joint was fire. I'll be honest with you. I don't remember the title. If I listen to something, let now, it fly. Okay. If I be honest with you, that's how it work. If I listen to something, right, and I listen to it, I'm like, all right, cool. If it's fire, fire, fire. I'm gonna go back and listen to it again and again. Yeah. But there's certain projects I don't listen to again, even though I know that they're good. I feel you. you see what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. There was nothing on the Carter Fire that made me want to go back and listen to it. You crazy. <laughs> I'm not be crazy with you. You crazy. You had Dedicate. You had, uh, what a, the, what a, uh, go. One, one, two, three, I let one go. Wow. The track was supposed to be That tired. was fire, yeah, that was fire. Uh, you had, uh, the song with XXX and Tassion, fire. You yeah. had the Mona Lisa joint, fire. Fire. You had the song, the song with Nicki Minaj, Loki was fire. Land on them, or, uh, that was fire, bro. You you gotta re-listen to the part. I'm gonna listen to it then. Re-listen to it. I'll re-listen to it. You'll find some gems. Cause I'll be honest with you, there's nothing. It was a lot better than the Carter Four. A lot better. I'm a big Wayne fan, bro. Mm -hmm. Like day one Wayne fan. Carter Four was trash. Really? At that time, it was, uh, it was like cool to listen to at the time, but like listening back mm -hmm. five years like from now, I'm listening and I'm like, this is really not. It wasn't a good album. It was it was easily the worst Carter album. Easily. Uh, my favorite Wayne project is going to be uh, Dedication 3. Or no, uh, no, no Ceilings. We talking mixtapes? No Ceilings. Well, I'm talking all projects. Albums. Al hard, my bro. favorite is going to be No, no I, Ceilings. I'm going to go with the Carter. The first one. Yeah? It's my favorite album. He had so many just like radio smashes in one album. It's like the man wasn't even trying. You know what's crazy? Mm. Why I give Wayne so much credit, bro? Mm. Besides the work ethic. But at a time, bro. Like you got to think, 2006, 2007. Right. Not only did he have radio on lot, but he had underground mixtape on lot too. That's at true. the same time. My and, space, and that's pocket. never, that's never like gonna be duplicated in any like generation. Like you can't do that. And one like did it. I'm saying Who who else did you like that came out last year? What you mean came out last year? Uh, JID, for sure. Twenty One Savage, JID. Uh, Everyone dropped last year, though. A lot of people dropped. It's, it was a tough year. year to kind of pick an album of the year. Album of the year was Travis Scott. Do you think so? Yeah. Astro World. Definitely the best. It was album. fire. It was a classic. It was the best. That was definitely a classic. It was fire. My favorite that kind of came out last year, I think I told you, was KOD. And I go on record yeah, saying that sure. I thought KOD was the best. I put KOD, KOD as too. KOD was fire. Um, Swimming. Fire. You know what? I actually was laid up on swimming. I was too. I didn't listen to swimming until after he died, which is which is crazy. Mm -hmm. But um, it was fire. Like I was too stuck on Travis Scott, and then YG dropped the same day that Travis Scott swimming and uh, and those two albums dropped. Yeah, stay stay dangerous. Stay dangerous came yeah, out. Stay, it did come out in the course of summer. The, the yeah. same day. The same day as Travis Scott and uh Mac Miller. And they, they all came out the same day. Fire. I'm a big YG fan. Bro. Woo. Fire. YG Loki don't get enough credit for his albums. Like he, he has like three really good albums. That was fire. That's a really the first time I ever really messed with YG like that. Cause I used to be stuck in a box. Really? Yeah. Bro, man. listen to uh, what was the last one? Still crazy. And, Still crazy. Uh, my my crazy life. Listen to those yeah. too, bro. Yeah, yeah. I really, really good albums. I man, I just I just got on YG because it's like I was so stuck in my own little ways mm -hmm. of how I wanted how I wanted my rap to be, how mm -hmm. I want to listen to instead of trying new stuff. So I was just stuck in the box, but man, that YG, it, Fire. ow, woof. Yeah, I like West Coast music, so. You know, I like it too. I like I like Vince Stables' project. I, it wasn't 
amazing to me, but I liked it. And I liked the stuff that came out before, North North, all that stuff. Yeah, I feel like that's that album should have won a Grammy in that category for that year. Stay Dangerous? No, uh, Big Fish Theory. Big Fish Theory? Really? Yeah, was, yeah. Because you got to look at, I feel like it was better than every single album that it was up against. Mm. But I, recall, I think it was like Tyler. Uh, it came out, you mean you're not think, Flower Boy? It came out before Flower Boy. No, it was the Flower Boy. It was the year of Flower Boy? Yeah. I feel like it was better than Flower Boy, boy. I said, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it was better than Flower Boy, though. Like, Flower, I'm not even the biggest Tyler the Creator fan, mm -hmm. but like, he's he's fire. I know he's fire. Flower Boy was art. Yeah, it yeah. was. He's fire. Yeah. But he's not Ben Staples. Trust me. Mm. Interesting. Guys, we got Rob Hicks here. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back here on 90.3. Attention, we're here on Monday. My name is Devon. I'm here with my main man, Rob Hicks. We are getting the second half of this interview off air. We were talking about something. The only thing I really like about you, Rob, is that you are not the norm. You consistently fight the norm. You are not the ABC fit in the box kind of guy. Even though, you know, some I hear, people... I hear people say that all the time, bro. Like, what does that mean? It just means that, like, you don't, like, what we expect, you knock all expectations out. So, for example, right, we're off air, we're just talking about Daytona. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks Daytona's a classic, except for you. Not trying to say you're the wrong one, but it's a matter of fact where your line of thinking is so much different. That's what makes you different, everybody. Else. I mean, it just goes back to I'm not a Pusha T fan, for one. Two, I'm not really interested in hearing his work. Three, I'm not impressed by it. Why, though? Because he's not that good to me. It's just that simple, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just that simple. Like, I don't just, like, rush. Mm -hmm. When Pusha T drop an album, bro, mm -hmm. I don't rush to my phone to go see it, to go listen to it. You feel me? Like, mm -hmm. I, I just don't. It's Pusha T. Who do you rush to listen to besides Wayne? Because we talked about that one. Right now? Travis, Kendrick, Cole. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't, I, I, I've not listened to Drake's last album yet. Scorpion. Wow. You have to listen to it. And I, I used to be a big fan of Drake like when he first came out, but I'm just not impressed anymore. Because it's like, he's reached that level. He's the biggest artist in the world, no mm -hmm. doubt. Mm -hmm. the biggest rapper in the world, for sure. But it's like, he can't do anymore to impress him. You know what I mean? So it's like, I don't need to hear it. I, I, I can go sign with that, because for a while, it just seemed to me that <clears throat> Drake was just kind of... It just seemed like I wasn't going to hear anything new out of him. And he'd be still in songs, too. Oh, I didn't know that. You lying. I promise I didn't know that. Like, my boy brought up an issue in regards to The weekend and some, some tracks I would take care of. But did I ever know for a fact he stole a song? No, did Drake, not know that. Ghostwriting? You were referring to Ghostwriting? No, I'm referring to, I'm referring to not only Ghost or er, uh, reference songs, but as far as him stealing songs, like whole songs and whole vibes, like he stole. Like his song, song Controller, he stole that song from Tiger. Did not know that? Yeah. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you the link, bro. Tiger made a song that sounds just like Controller. I and not, Drake came out with it like five years later, bro. I know he. Uh, I know he's big on hopping waves. So whatever his song track, oh, yeah, like that too. <laughs> that too, bro. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like he still yeah. songs. He he. I mean, I'm not a Drake uh, hater or nothing like that. Like Drake, mm -hmm. obviously talented. He's the biggest artist in the world. Like, mm -hmm. He makes music. I'm a vibe to it for sure. But it's like, all right, I'm not impressed anymore though. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I get you, I get you. So, back to you. Now, Offset made a statement a few months ago saying that swag rap is dying. How do you feel about that? He said that on the Breakfast Club, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it, it is dying, but at the same time, it's never going to die. Because swag rap always been mm. the thing, bro. Like, you can go back to as far as rap when rap was first created mm -hmm. hip hop. Like Adidas jumpsuits and gold chains, you know what I'm saying? That's what they had on. But like to me, in my opinion, it just seems like now it's going a little bit beyond swag rap. And I think by swag rap he also kinda of was kinda of looking at this drug heavy I pop pills like the little um Lil Pump, for example. I think that's one person who's really getting locked into that who will be dying off because it's just like he came out recently and argued said he wants to be just the most ignorant rapper Rich and just be the most ignorant and most richest rapper on the planet. Let me tell you something, bro. As long as he can make hits, he's not gonna die off. But see, my thing is, when as consumers, are we gonna get tired of that? Of him just talking about, yeah, I pop a pill, I do this, I do that. We're not gonna, like, it's it's the same thing over and over. It is, it, it, and you is you absolutely right, but at the end of the day, bro, just 
your voice don't speak for like an entire generation or an entire crowd. You know what I'm saying? Like these other, you can't control the way that they consume music. You know what I'm saying? Like waves come and go. Period. Like it's gonna be a wave of something that's next, and that this popping pill era or whatever is not gonna carry over to that. So maybe he will die off, but for now, for the next maybe two years, maybe, I don't see it happening. Like, especially when he's, Lil Pump is pretty big, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, Lil Pump is pretty big. Like, he's one of the biggest rappers in the world right now. People yeah. don't even know. Like, he's he's pretty big. So, he said if he's putting his money in the right, right place, who knows, he might start a label, he might sign the next artist that's going to hop into that next wave. You know what I'm saying? Example would be uh, like Rich the Kid. Mm -hmm. you know, Rich the Kid signed Jay Critch and what's the other guy? Not a fan of Jay Critch. Not a fan of him either. Not a fan of Jay And Jay Famous Dex. Not a fan of Famous Dex either. Not me either. But like Jay Critch is like, he could be a double XL freshman this year. You know what I'm saying? Could be. I don't see it happen. But he could be. I wouldn't be surprised if he was on there. I'm I'm cool on Jay Chris. I'm cool on him too. <laughs> I don't like him, but he he got potential to be big though. What what is like? I'm just trying to understand because it seems, seems like over the years that the XXL freshman list has just been not up to par on what we like it. And granted, so? we're not the editors. Yeah, I mean, I mean, granted, this all again, music is art and art is subjective. So what I may see versus what someone else may see could they're probably going to be two different things. But you know, you see a lot of the same things. Kids with little in front of, I'm saying kids like they, that thing are my age. I gotta show more respect. But you know, these dudes who put little whatever in front of their name, and then they just talk out a bunch of crap. Granted, art, like I said, art is subjective and music is, but in my opinion, I just think there has to, like, the, it needs to be tighter. The, it needs to be harder to let these dudes in. Well, nowadays, it's, it's a numbers game and it's a clock game. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, whoever got, whoever doing the most numbers, they're gonna be in the I'm not saying it like that, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And whoever got the most thought, that isn't like Drake. Might be on a freshman <laughs> list. That's new. You feel me? Like, mm -hmm. and I feel like Double XL been getting it right the past couple years. To be honest with you, because who would you have put up on the freshman list that wasn't on it last year? <sighs> I gotta really think about this one. Like, what do they have? Ski Mask deserved to be on it. GID deserved to be on it. Lil Skies made it, but he wasn't a part of the cover. Deserved to be on it. It's hard to argue with that. Lil mm -hmm. Pump made it. JB, Block Boy JB made it. Deserved to be. Everybody that made the cover deserved to be on the cover. The only person that I would say didn't really deserve to be on the cover would be like Wi Fi's funeral. Mm -hmm. But like mostly everybody else deserved to be on the cover. Like I, I couldn't argue with it. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to get back to you on that one. Because it just, it just feels like, and again, this is me. Feeling like the quality, and granted, the bars been set lower, I think, and I think that's I, what it is. And that rap is changing, so I'm sitting here, that's and, and I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting here, and I'm trying to give you a constructive answer without just saying something and sounding stupid. Right. But I'm stuck because I have to remember that because the bar has been set lower, what I may like may not always not be in the way right now, and that music comes in waves, right. and really life comes in waves in general. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think it's also me trying to adjust to this wave. I understand that, but I may like is always going to be at the forefront. Even though my favorite rapper is J. Cole, not everyone's going to sound like J. Cole. J. Cole's the third biggest rapper in the world right now. So. I don't even know if I consider, I know you said Drake's number one. I don't, I don't consider Drake a rap artist. I do, he raps, but he's more a pop artist to me. Because a lot of his, his more of his bigger songs are pop. That's where his, that's where his bread and butter is. You guys see average casual music fan, and they're going to bring out Drake at Hotline Bling or something like that. Or like Controller. Some is not actually like rap rap. This is more when it's radio rap. You know what I'm saying? Right, but at the same time, bro, you gotta think. Listen to the radio nowadays. What on the radio is actually rap? Like who's actually rapping that's on the radio okay. right now? That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like who's actually like name your song? That's rap on the radio. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like rap, rap on the radio. Right, right, right. You feel me? So mm -hmm. it's like I feel, I mean, it's, it's sad, but Drake's hip hop, bro. It's just, he's vamping it up a little bit. 
You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he's he's doing he's reaching out to other cultures and genres and feeding off and sucking all the juice out of their culture and and stealing songs <laughs> and stuff and making hits out of them. You know what I'm saying? Like he's doing it better than anybody else is doing it right now. Mm. Like it's it sucks, but like I can't hate on on him for it. Like whatever. Do what you do. <laughs> you can be the best like rap artist thief ever if you want. Now out of all your growth as an artist from when you started up to now, what is part of your growth that you are the most proud of? Honestly, bro, it's not even like an, an achievement. It's more so of uh, me. I actually made like a, an Instagram like post about this today. It's like trusting myself and trusting my work. Because mm -hmm. like for a while, I used to try to like make music and just like experiment with different songs that like wasn't me. But I knew that people would like it, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. like, I'm going to do it. But at the end of the day, I'm like, I have a gift. You feel me? Like, of being me, mm -hmm. who I am as an artist. Right. And I can do that better than anybody else that can do that. Like, there's never going to be another me. So why would I try to be somebody else? You feel me? And if you appreciate it, you appreciate it. If you don't, then you just don't. Other people will. And that's, like, my biggest, honestly, achievement. Honestly, as mm -hmm. far as music goes, because that's where like my bread and butter is up to being like myself as artist and knowing what I can do, and most importantly, knowing what I can't do. What does it make you think you can't do? <laughs> I can harmonize really good, actually. I just mm -hmm. don't do it a lot on tracks, but um, I can't like make. I sound good on like certain production. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like certain production, you'd be like, "Dang, he sounds really good on." But if I was to rap on different production it wouldn't sound so good because it's like, your voice don't sound good with that beat, mm -hmm. you feel me? So it's like, just knowing, just knowing your sound, bro. Just knowing what you can and can't do. It. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What is something that you struggle with the most as in far your as development, as in terms of the artist? My voice. Like, I learned my voice. Mm -hmm. and how to like, bend it and maneuver it and do a lot of stuff with it mm -hmm. over time, but it wasn't always like that. Like I used to have like I used to be like really, really like soft on the microphone and stuff. So like my voice was just small. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it just developed into something that I could just bend, I can go high, I can go low. Like at the back of nine. So has your voice changed over time? Because I know with some people I know, I guess it all depends on how young you started when you're rapping. I wouldn't say it changed, but it, it just like once you know like your sound, bro, and once you know like what presets you want to use mm -hmm. to have like this is your voice right here mm -hmm. like that's you it's like a rap from there like once you figure that out it's like you can do anything with it and you can we know nowadays with computers bro we can make ourselves sound better than what we really are facts like, come on, bro, you know what <laughs> you're right what is your least favorite part of music uh i mean I would say business, but sometimes business is, is fire because, you know, you get your money. But mm -hmm. Everybody love getting money. Yeah, for sure. But I would just have to say uh, it's it's oversaturated. Mm. Mm. Now, excuse me. You said that well, at the beginning of this interview, you said you signed a distribution deal. Now, did you f do you feel that distribution deals may not feel as necessary anymore with the advent of streaming and being able to promote yourself on social media? And putting your, everyone's putting their own music, own music on Apple Music on Spotify. Do you feel that distribution deal, deal is necessary? No, it wasn't necessary, but at the end of the day, you still have to pay to put your music on streaming services. Now I just don't have to pay. You know, they just do it up front. And I keep all the proceeds. And no matter what I upload, and the thing about distribution deals, bro, mm -hmm. like you can like change stuff. You feel me? Like say you want to add something to an album that's already out on Spotify or Apple Music. If you want like TuneCore or something, you can't change that. You can release it again, mm -hmm. but you can't like go into that actual file and like add a song, bonus song, oh, I or fix that. a song, okay. mix a song. It's like say it's like remix or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can just swap the songs out. I didn't know that. Now at this is that deal, what I'm okay. Is this, now is this deal um, for a certain amount of years? No, nah, it's just it's a uh, it's. It's through E1, which is like a digital, uh, basically independent, um, you know, distribution service. Mm -hmm. Like like TuneCore, right. in a sense, you know what I'm saying? DistroKid, whatever, the real ones. 
out there. So it's nothing like super, super special. It's just like it's a distribution deal where we, it's like a partnership with each other. You know what I'm saying? Do you ever fear being caught in a situation like Kanye? <clears throat> What, what situation is in? He, uh, last week an article came out about When him. he can't retire or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous, but yeah. No. How come? I mean, because Kanye is Kanye, for one. People need to realize that. Yeah. Kanye is Kanye, so he doesn't have to do much to, re to like, reach that criteria of him being Kanye because it's already unpredictable as it is. So... If it's, if it's in his contract that he can't retire, okay, let's just drop a six song album that I have these six songs on my computer that I've been having for like five years. Mm -hmm. Let's just put them on an album, whatever. Let's make some money off of it. All right. You know what I mean? Maybe you might have to go on tour for a month or two, but it's no big deal to him, trust me. But it's just like now he's trying to get out of it. And I think that- Who is, says he's trying to get out of it? There's an article I was reading, he's suing. He's so to get out of that contract, yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, maybe he wants to get out of it then. Because I'm not there, <laughs> But, I mean, maybe he wants to get out of it then. I would, too. I would, honestly, too. Yeah, I, I would, too. And I, I, and I, yeah, and I think that represents the biggest fear of a lot of people when it terms of signing labels. The big cliche is that I'm not going to be retired. I'm thinking to keep all my money. And we just saw Uzi, who just now recently is able to put out an album. That's situation. Yeah, that's he, he stuck in, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, well Uzi, he signed a 360 deal. A lot of people don't know that. Uzi signed a 360 deal, mm. which was bad, but, I mean, it made him famous, but it was bad because it's a 360 deal. But, so it's no surprise to me that he's in the position that he's in right now, three mm. years later after he kind of popped. I just, if I was an upcoming artist, I wouldn't even sign a deal. You don't need to anymore. You, you, don't, you don't. Any promotion that you have is all through your phone. Yeah, you don't need to anymore, bro. And I think the biggest artist that taught you that, Regardless of it, people say that he signed now, but I still don't know who he signed to. No one knows. Chance the Rapper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big confusion because it's yeah. like, it's like he was signed even, to Apple or something like that, but you can't be signed to Apple Music. Exactly. Right. That's, that's, the, that's the whole thing. So it's like, he made a wave of, of artists that even if you're signed, you don't have to appear to be signed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, we can do it my way still. Right. You know what I'm saying? People mm -hmm. can still think I'm doing it my way. When actually I got a whole label pushing, mm -hmm. and even if he maybe he isn't signed, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Nobody knows. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Nobody knows. You feel me? So it's yeah. like it's crazy. He made that like wave. He's like the biggest independent artist out right now. So right, but that's the thing with regardless of whether he's signed or not, he's popping, and I think that's yeah. the thing that's what people put more weight into yeah. now is how big they are as an artist. Because he has good music, Facts. and regardless of. Anything, good music will never die. That is true. And that's why when people talk about Kanye, and they say, oh, I'm not going to listen to him anymore, and Kanye is trash, and right such now. and such. Exactly. Yeah. I'm for the cap? Yeah. Uh, not me. What you going to say about Kanye? I'm going to say about Kanye. He's, his musical genius is never, ever, ever going to be a touch to me. Ever. I don't care what he says. So you like these last two albums that Kanye put up? Yes. That's cap. But that was not. That last album was trash. That was not. Yeah. Okay, you talking about all of it? Yeah, it was fire. Yeah, it was trash. Kids, he goes was hard. Okay, that was hard. Daytona was hard. Only one. No, I'm talking about Kanye. Kanye. So you talking about Yeah, the Life of Pablo? That's what I'm talking about. You don't like the Life of Pablo? It was alright. Oh that my was, God, bro! Wow. Honestly, rank it in, into your Kanye album. Jeez, you're not ranking that in your top five. Oh my God, you oh you're not doing it. Okay, okay, you okay. You just can't do it. College dropout, graduation. Late registration. You was crazy right now. You did not mention my beautiful girl twist. Bro, let me get there. Let me get there. Bro, I was going on. Gee, hold on. You're not even letting me get to the five. Right, ahead, this, is ahead, ahead. this is in no particular order. This is my top five. You are. This is my top five. College dropout. Late registration. Graduation. I'll be retarded with some fantasy. You're not putting Michael Pablo in there. I'm sorry, you're just not doing it. <laughs> but it's between that eight oh eights, bro. I don't know. The life of Pablo is so fire. The life of Pablo is so fire, bro. I'm it's sorry. Not, it's not no eight oh eights, bro. Come everybody, on, everybody, man. I get I get an eight oh eight change music. Everybody know that. Eight oh eights change music. Everybody know that. It was fire. It, it it's it's a classic. It's, it's not even comparable, honestly. You don't think so at all? Not even at all. Not even. Why way, do you bro. say that? Bro, what song do we remember from Life of Pablo? I can name a few. Wolves, Father Stretch My Hands. You remember Wolves? Chance. Yes. The song that got changed like four times? That's okay. Fade, Waves, Fire. All of Fade it. Fade was fire. But no, it, part, no more parties in LA? Fire. 
Yeah, but that song's like 12 years old when it came out. That ver- that Kendrick verse was, was from like 2011. But we still got it at the time. The song is still good. It was alright for a little bit for what it was, but ain't nobody listening to that right now. You ain't listening to Life of Pablo. Everybody listen to 808s. If you listen to Kanye, you listen to 808s. My big production is to Fantasy or College Struggle. I'm going to listen to Kanye all right now. Right now, I'm listening to Boogie 2 Chain Salon. That Boogie go crazy. Fire. Boogie that's my fire. favorite album. That's, that's out right now. Boogie's fire. So fire. Violet Ride. He got a list, so you got to say that. Silent Ride Home. Yeah, I mean, and it's crazy, you know, just being out in LA, the music culture, the music scene out there is nuts, bro. Like, I wish I could have got more deep into it, but just in terms of how they band together with each other, I think we need more out here on the local scene. And they do it well. <clears throat> like, a lot of areas, it's okay here. I feel like it could be better. But Chicago's great about it. Well, that's because we don't have big artists. Well, Chicago, obviously, but mm. Lake County Racing, we don't have big artists like that mm. to actually put the city on notice. You feel me? Mm. You know, Chicago has countless artists. And actually, Chicago is actually dying. To be honest with you, as far as the music scene goes. Why do you say that? Uh, who would you rate like your top rele- most relevant artists from Chicago right now as far as new artists go? Well, Saba, No Name, Smino. Smino's technically not from Chicago. Though. But he came up music scene out of Chicago though. You're right. So I kind of got to lock him in there. You're right. That's what I'm saying though. And if you go to certain parts of Chicago, don't nobody know who No Name, Smino, or Saba is. That's crazy. You feel me? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like, what's like a Chicago artist besides G Herbo that everybody knows? Besides G Herbo, that's Jan? still popping like on a mainstream level right now. Besides G Herbo and Jan. I haven't heard anything Dirk in a while. So yeah, I haven't heard Baby in a while. Yeah. Exactly. Chicago dying, bro. But see, do you really have to be popping on a mainstream to to be thriving? No, you don't. Not at all. Mm-hmm. Not on a mainstream level, but for perception purposes, yeah. Because if you're not, you know what I'm saying, popping, if you're not on the like, radio, people don't really care about you, honestly. Like, we notice you, but if you're not making like major, major moves like that, like don't nobody care about you. I agree, but I'm going to disagree with you too, because you got artists like Jid or like Boogie. No, no got- see, that's different though. Okay. That's different because they got like the cosigns. You just say, name two artists with like major Big cosigns, cosigns right. J. Cole and Manu. All right. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't got a cosign, or if you're not on the radio, or if you're not doing nothing like super, super amazing that we ain't never seen before, how many artists come out of Chicago every year? Saba not doing nothing different that every artist ain't ain't did before him from Chicago. Nick Jenkins was before that. Mm. No name not doing nothing different. Katie Got Benz was before that. Smino actually might be doing the most different thing in the scene. Because nobody sounds like Because nobody Smino. sounds like Smino. Exactly. So, did you like Care For Me? Stop. I did. Stop. I, I, did. I love Care For Me. I did. Top so, five albums a year, for sure. Yeah, so I think that in terms of when you look at maybe doing something different, it may not be different, it may just be so good at the lane that they're It was in. good. It was, yeah. it was really good. You know what I'm saying? I, I, bro, I'm not taking nothing away from Saba. Mm-hmm. was one of the best rappers in, from Chicago, period. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Facts. But I'm just saying, like, as far as the way that this, the way we think nowadays in like terms of hip hop culture, you feel me? Like, if you're not doing nothing that's like super, super amazing, like don't nobody really care about you, bro. When we first met, you made a statement about being selective with who you're working with. You remember that at Alicia's video shoot? Yeah, for sure. Could you go ahead and explain that again for the people? Because it's interesting, and I think it has to be said again, because we always look at big artists, and they say, like, for example, Cole Kendrick, oh, we want them to collab. We want this, we want that. But yet, nobody really understands the working behind their collab. I'm not trying to speak on their relationship specifically, but I think you had a really good point that could shed a lot of light on why we Damn, don't. Damn, I'm trying to figure out what was, I, what was I saying. You made a really, really, really good point about collaboration, so we had a good, pretty good discussion about it. I don't know, bro. I just feel like now... You just really have to be mindful of who you work with. Like, time is everything. Like, you can't just waste your time with like people that's not gonna. Like, with me, I do I do features a lot, honestly. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it don't even come up. Like, they don't put the song out. So it's like not only did I waste my time with it, but I could have used that verse for something else. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, so it's like I don't know, bro. Like, I, I just don't work with people like that no more. Like. As far as like J. Cole and Kendrick go, those are grown men. Like you right. can't really 
they, they have family. They have families, they have... Right, and that's a whole nother... That's like... Just the schedules, bro. You can't really, like, pressure, like, albums, like, collab albums like that. Like, right. it'll happen, it'll happen. But those guys aren't in the studio every single day. Those guys are recording every day, but it's for different projects. Mm -hmm. Those guys have their own, like, label and their own team that they got to work with, too, as right. well. You know what I'm saying? They're not on the same, like, label in any way that you cut it. They're just in two different complete two worlds. Different complete worlds, you feel me? Right. So it's like they have to really be dedicated to actually lock in and, and distribute something for the people. Yeah. Who's your favorite artist to work with? Um, so far? Yeah. I would say, uh, that's a good question. I would say Trapple out of Madison. Okay, where is that artist out of? He's out of Madison, his name is Trapple. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I thought no, that was the name. <laughs> Trapple, bro. Okay, okay, my bad, I thought Fire. it was... Fire, okay. Fire, please check him out. Gotcha. Fire. But like, I used to, uh, I used to clean at this, uh, like factory mm -hmm. like some years ago and at the time he was like 15 bro and i would just listen to him he had a buzz back then he was yeah. getting like i don't know 800k maybe mm -hmm. back then so i would just listen to him like dude's fire like I, I didn't have a song out back then but i had no music out and i just reached out to him one day like hey i got this record for you he was cool about it too mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying he was cool about it did it it was fire but he's he's fire he really pushed me like to my like lyrical limits. How do you push? Because his verse is fire. It's just like a competition standpoint because it's not a competition standpoint, but at the same time, I ain't trying to be no dang bro. You got carried by this feature type artist. You feel me? Like you know what I'm saying? Like you, right. you see, you see it all the time on records. Like I'm not trying to be that. Right. And at least make it competitive. Like I don't know. I like this verse, and then another somebody else can say, I don't know. I kind of like this verse, but mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? At least let it, let that discussion be something. Mm -hmm. Don't let it just be. On some Cardi B backing it up type stuff. Like, where Cardi B clearly had the best verse on the song. Don't nobody ever think we've ever done the dudes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I got you. Yeah. That's kind of like the Kendrick and Control thing. Because I'll be honest with you, I listen to Control. I know Jay Electronica is a good rapper. So I've heard the verse before. Stop it, bro. That's the second time you done Captain. Oh my God. Jay Electronica? Yeah. You don't like his verse on Control? It was by far the worst verse on that song. My point was, I'm saying, it's a good verse, but after I hear Kendrick's verse, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Jay's verse anymore. Yeah, that should have had that go last. That did say. <laughs> yeah, last. yeah, it should have went last. I agree with that, but I'm not trying to take anything away from Jay, but after I hear Kendrick, I don't want to hear anything else yeah, off that track. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't really like the fact that Jay Electronic is like 50 and he still hasn't had an album out. <laughs> that is kind of confusing. <laughs> like, what is he so good yeah. for? Yeah, it, it is kind of confusing and at this point you know uh, you see a lot of people that push him though are older dudes too true but at the same time i feel like if he dropped an album that would be news definitely people would care because we've been waiting for him for so long people, care. people would definitely care mm -hmm. i would personally because it's just like i i only thing I really have to base off this guy is stuff i can find up on youtube and that control works for sure and plus erica badu from the push it so you know once you got erica badu as your baby mama and co you know, facts yeah you, you, you can do certain things. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's a dream collaboration for you? Dream collaboration. Just for me, specifically? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to work with ASAP. I just like his vibe. ASAP Rocky. Mm -hmm. ASAP Rocky and maybe Cuddy. I don't know. I like Samino a lot, too. I would, I would definitely make some fire with Samino. I feel like me and J.I.D. could do some fire stuff together. That would be nice. Because people always say we kind of sound like so. You know, I was reading an article the other <clears> week, and it said you have a likeness to Danny Brown. I love Danny Brown. How do you, is that how you feel about that? That comparison to said to you, you've been compared to Danny Brown a lot. I don't want to say I would compare myself to Danny Brown, but just the way that he went about just going on records was fire to me. Like, he just didn't care. He was just wild. And everything from his image to just his whole demeanor was fire, bro. Like, it just reminded me of like Rick James, like on a rapping level though. <laughs> you know, like, it was just really fire. Okay. Like, and then you heard the music, like the voice was like so high, and then it can go really low. That's I honestly, that's where the comparison came in from. Okay. Because on like my first song, I was like kind of like monotone, but like the second song it was like a high pitch record, and that's when the comparison started to fall for. For sure. Well, unfortunately, guys, we gotta wrap up. Here, my boy Rob. Rob, where can people find you at? They can find me everywhere, man. Twitter, Instagram, I hate Rob Hicks. 
Yes. That's a I weird name. I hate Rob Hicks. <laughs> you know what's crazy, bro? Huh? That name fire. I hate Rob it's, Hicks. It's, it's a nice name, but it's, it's, just, nice it's name, weird. It's, it's, I never... It's, it's good, like, it, it's like a conundrum. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. That's why, that's why I got it. I hate Rob Hicks. Rob Hicks was taken. Rob Hicks underscore was taken. What you want me to do? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I hate Rob Hicks everything. I got you guys. Guys, you can find me on Facebook at Devon of the Street. Facebook in school detention, Twitter at DCU Team One Five, Instagram at Devon Allen, Whew, and YouTube at In School Detention. And of course, you can find me here every Monday, five six p.m. on WRLR. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys have a blessed day.